Welcome to this episode of The Gunman. So this video here is part two on the Nissan S14 200SX drift car. First video we included painting the entire insides in white, the roll cage, the engine bay in the reddy pinky color, and we then went on to paint all the panels in the three stages of the base coat. So I went first up with the silver to get some coverage. We went over the top of that with the greens and the blues, and over the top of that we mixed some pearl with some intercoat, so just some clear base coat with a bit of orange pearl, and we also just put three teaspoons of the DNA 200 micron hologram flakes just to add a bit of wildness to it something a bit crazy something out there so you may have noticed that I'm taking my clear coat and hardener out of a bucket of water um, you may be wondering what the hell I'm doing but this is probably one of the best tricks in the trade for painting in the cold so basically what I've done I've just got the buckets and then filled them up with steaming hot water out of the kettle boiled the kettle a couple of times, filled them up, I've heated up the hardener as well as the clear coat. So this is basically going to help dry that clear out without me getting runs. Um, it's made it so that I'm able to go around and by the time I'd finished putting the first coat of clear on, that second coat of clear is right to go straight over because it's tacked straight off because I'll probably, at a guess it'll be about 50 degrees Celsius. However, I can't be 100% accurate on that reading, but in the future I'll be able to give you guys exact temperatures of my panels and my clears and everything, ambient temperatures and stuff like that because I've ordered in a digital thermometer. So stay tuned for a bit more accuracy in the future. Another thing I've done is just put fast hardener in it. So it's going to uh, speed up the process of that clear coat drying. So basically the worst part of trying to paint in the cold is the paint's not drying uh, quick enough so it stays wet for that little bit longer so it raises the risk of it running. There's actually a few other added advantages to using preheated clear. Now because this job here we use those flakes in it, the 200 micron holographic flakes. Now what we wanted to do is try and fill like bury those uh, flakes up with the clear coat. So we used a high solid clear, which people probably know that is quite thick. Medium sides are a lot thinner. Um, so by heating it up, we're actually thinning it down without having to put any reducer in it. Reducer can also sort of start to break the clear down and you'll also lose gloss out of it. I was able to really heave this shit on really heavy and I didn't get any solvent boil because it was drying nice and quick and I didn't lose much gloss at all through it. I was really quite happy with the way this came out in the end and um, not, I think there was one or two tiny little runs in it, just a little build up on the edge which if I hadn't have heated that clear up I would have had to have put reducer in it and I can tell you now if I hadn't put it on as wet as what I did there would have been runs all over it. I've been painting for about 14 years now, I started in the year 2000 and it always seems to get me that first week of cold weather. It'll come along and it'll just catch you off guard. You continue painting the same way that you have always been painting throughout summer, just smashing it on, not worrying about runs or anything like that. Winter comes along, bang, it cools down, the paint's obviously not drying as quick as what it usually does, and then you'll come back in and you'll just have the paint running, and yeah, it gets pretty annoying, but um, it doesn't really take me too long to readjust to it. Um, you get that one, one or two jobs, and then you'll remember, oh, that's right, I used to heat my clear up. Um, especially being in a spray booth like mine with no heat in it, so we're just running on ambient temperature all year round, um, yeah, it really does make a massive difference. I can just, yeah, paint like I can in the middle of summer, but it's winter. I'll give you guys a quick run through the settings. I get a few people asking about the settings that I use on this starter jet. Um, what I've been using lately, um, I've just had the fan, you wind that fan right open and then come back, say, a quarter of a turn. Um, I've been setting the pressure a little bit higher than I was in the first couple of videos using it. I think I was running about sort of 0.9 to 1 bar, but I've been running it up a little bit more, say 1.1 to 1.3. Just uh, still experimenting with this gun and finding its sweet spot. Um, but yeah, stay tuned and I'll do a couple more reviews. I was going to do maybe a uh, gun showdown or something like that where I could get the GTI Pro Lite and on my uh, own car, I'm doing a VL Commodore up. I'm going to flow coat that. I thought maybe I could paint one side with the Sarda Jet and paint the other side with the uh, Devilvis GTI Pro Lite, um, see how much they use and stuff like that and just do a bit of a head-to-head -head video. 
So stay tuned for stuff like that. So the fluid setting I had set on this gun at this point was just the two turns out. So wound that fluid right in, came out two full turns. Um, when it came to the rest of the car, I actually ended up winding it out another full turn. I just found I wanted just that little bit more fluid on and just just to move that a little bit quicker. So, you know, I'm still, as I said, I'm still getting the, um, the fine adjustments on this gun, but I'm extremely happy with the results. It really does pump that clear on. So this video here, I've just decided to go start to finish. Uh, not much editing at all. I put an intro in, I put a bit of an ending in, and that's about it. So it's just start to finish, normal speed. I get a lot of people that are just, just say they're really happy to see these longer videos that include every single step. I'll do my best to keep you guys interested, but I'll go along with a little bit of the prep work that we've done and stuff like that. So you can see this guard here. Um, now, it's a fiberglass panel. You could spend days and days and days on trying to get that straight like as you would if it was a normal panel off a car, like a steel panel, but it's not what he's looking for. They're big over fenders. They basically use them because they're cheap and you can pull them on and off really easily and they're pumped out so you can get those big tires, those big drift tires up underneath them. Um, so what did we do as far as prep on those? All we really did, get a bit of 400 grit, sand it down on the orbital sander, run around the edges. We just use one of those 400 soft back sanding sponges. You could replace that with a piece of scotch bright and then just paint it straight over it. Look, there is a few pinholes in a couple of them, but as a few of the guys have already mentioned on the first video of this, this car's already probably got a better job than it deserved for a drift car that's going to go out there getting banged around and knocked up. He'll definitely have the best looking drift car around in Perth anyway. Just back to the heating and clear up. As you saw, I heated it up in the hot water. Just be extremely careful, obviously, if you do decide to heat it up, you don't want any water in the eclair. Um, however, the water will rise to the top, so just get a rag. If you, I've had a couple of drops land in there before. Just got a rag and sit it on the top and it should just soak it up. Um, but yeah, water in your clear, that's probably one of the worst things that you can have um, if you'd actually have it come through the spray gun. Uh, humidity is another very bad thing when you're painting, if you've got high humidity. So be very careful. I'm um, pretty lucky here in Perth. We've just got uh, most of the time it's dry hot weather. It does get a little bit cold in the winter at the moment, but hey, as you guys see, with the heating up of the clear, it's really not too big of an issue. And we're not a high volume shop. We do more big jobs and stuff like that. The majority of our jobs are big jobs. And if we do get the little jobs come in, we don't tell the customer we can do it in the same day. We just say, look, it's going to take two days for a small job. If it's a big job, it might take up to three days. And um, we only do private work. We don't do any insurance work. So it's been working out quite well for us so far. And uh, you know, considering we're in our first year, I'm pretty happy with how we're going. We're starting to make money. So it obviously takes a bit of money setting your business up, but I might even do just a video dedicated to the way I've set my business up and stuff like that in the future. So stay tuned for loads more videos. Um, what I'm doing here is I've actually painted one of these S14 drift cars before. I didn't make a video on the previous one, um, but we also painted the exact same fenders off that. And I tried painting those big vents on the inside with the normal spray gun. It ended up just running all over the place. And that was another one of those cars I was telling you about that was sort of at the start of it getting cold. And I just sort of forgot about heating the clear up. Also, because for the last few years, I've been working in spray booths with heat in them. So I haven't bothered about heating my clear up a lot, you know, um, especially when you're doing in a high volume shop. If you've got a heated booth, um, you know, and you're doing five cars a day, it's barely worth um, every time you need to mix some clear up, you know, heating it up. It does take a bit of time, but um, in this shop and these kind of jobs, it's definitely worth doing. Um, I'm very glad that I remembered uh, to bring that back out. So, as you can see, straight on with, that, with my second coat now. Um, pretty similar settings, just oh, exactly the same gun settings, just moving a touch slower, just trying to really, really bury those holographic flakes that we put on in the previous video because they, um, they're 200 micron, as I mentioned before, so they're really, they're wanting, they're wanting to uh, poke up through that clear coat. Um, so it's, it's definitely working in my favor. I'm using the high solid clear. Medium solid clear, it would probably look pretty terrible. Um, what is medium solid, high solid, and low VOC paints? It's all to do with how thick it is, for those of you who don't know. I do get some questions about stuff like that, so in some of these longer videos, I guess, to try to cover a few of those questions. Um, yeah, medium solids is 
as it says, medium solids. You know, it's um, it's the thinnest uh, you get in automotive 2K clears. It's the thinnest that I know of anyway. I've never heard of anything thinner than that. Um, and then you've got your high solids, which is quite thick. Um, usually they need uh, around 10% reducer unless you heat them up or unless it's the middle of summer. Um, and then you've got your low VOC uh, clears or 2Ks as well. Uh, they're commonly referred to just as VOC. However, all paint is actually a VOC. VOC stands for Volatile Organic Compound. So basically petrol or fuel is a VOC. It's just something that is volatile, which means it will blow up if you put a lighter to it. Um, so that's to the best of my knowledge anyway. Um, if any of the info I give you is incorrect, I do apologize. I am not Einstein. I am just a spray painter, and I do my best to include as much information in my videos as I can. Uh, this video, I actually started on Sunday. I sat down for about two or three hours trying to come up with stuff to say in it, and I made 10 or 20 takes, and it was just doing my head in. So today, it's Thursday. I've come back after work, and I had a little bit of pre-workout powder, and I'm just feeling in the zone, so I decided I'd sit down for a couple more hours and finish this video off. I hope you guys appreciate, and if you do, don't forget to hit the thumbs up button on my videos. Uh, don't forget also to check me out on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and all that stuff. If you check out my description to my videos, you'll see links in there as well. I do apologize if I can't get back to all the comments and questions that I had in my videos, but just because I haven't replied doesn't mean I haven't read it, so um, don't be afraid to comment. You may even get the answer in the next video, which is something I might start doing when I run out of stuff to say. Here's a perfect example. I had a question here from Invert Mini Baller number five on my one of my previous videos, Mutant Crystals. He asked the question, can you shoot 2K clear over 1K cured clear after a certain amount of time or will it give off a re reaction regardless? Well, from my experience, sometimes you're gonna be lucky and sometimes you're not gonna be lucky. And if you are to put 2k base coat over some 1k clear you just put it on nice and dry if you know that that's 1k underneath clear coat's probably less likely so if you had 2k 1k clear underneath sorry and then you went 2k clear over the top there's probably you'd probably be pretty right whereas if you were to go over the top of that 1k clear with 2k base coat you can do it, it's probably not recommended, but just dust it on. The best way to deal with acrylic is take a lot of it off and start again and put two-pack on. It's really not good paint at all, I believe. Two-pack is far superior. Gloss levels, film thicknesses, and all that kind of stuff. There is no reason to go back to acrylic. I cannot see any reason anyway. But sometimes you have to deal with it, and if you do, um, yeah, the best way to work around it is to either two-pack prime the entire panel, or there's another option of using some transparent sealers. I used to use a good one with the Glazerit system, which is what I spent most of my trade working with Glazerit. Um, and I had a good transparent sealer. You could throw over the panel first, and then you'd be able to put your base coat and clear coat over the top. And most of the time, you didn't have many reactions because it was just like a two-pack bed underneath yours, and it's gonna seal it all down. And as long as you let it dry out for long enough before you go and put your paint over the top of it, you were usually pretty right. It wasn't foolproof, but yeah, you usually got some good results. So if you are working with stuff like uh, 1K paint underneath uh, a lot, then it might be worth investing in some transparent sealer. So hope you're watching the Invert Mini Ball number five. Um, hope that helped you clear up a few of those questions. It's actually something that I have been uh, meaning on doing a specific video on 1K and 2K and what all those kind of different paints mean and stuff like that. But don't forget these vids don't edit themselves. Um, so yeah, I was even thinking of getting a suction fed gun. We've actually got some 1K clear sitting in there. I was just thinking of grabbing an old panel. That's about all I would put 1K clear on personally. Um, and yeah, I'll do a dedicated video to that subject. So stay tuned for that. Another thing I'd like to actually make a quick mention to, um, the video that that comment was on was the DNA Paints Mutant Crystals. Um, now I had some, uh, mixed results with it. Um, I was told off actually by the guy that owns DNA Paints or the manager anyway. Um, he wasn't 100% happy with a few of the things that I said in it. Um, I think I said optimal temperature was about 30 degrees. Hey, it was relevant to me at the time. I may have been wrong. Not everything I say is right, but it's this car here. We tried doing mutant crystals on the bonnet of this car. 
we ended up using half a bottle of the crystals and we just couldn't get it to look right. Um, we tried and tried and tried and we couldn't get it to look right. Make no mistake, those mutant crystals are not easy to use. It, um, I hope to get it to the point where I can easily use them, but for me at the moment, they're really not. So um, I do apologize if any of the info in that is wrong, but it's not intentional, and I don't make any of these videos to spite anyone. Um, another thing on that same video, everyone knows that stupid French guy who stole my logo. He's gone back and given the thumbs down like 12 or 13 times on that video. I know it's him. I can view exactly where the dislikes came from. Um, don't, yeah, just disregard those dislikes. I really don't care. Um, I have a bit of a theory that a dislike is like giving my video a plus two because it's engagement. It's actually pissed you off so much that you've engaged with it. But anyway, not to worry about it. Um, as you can see there, I use that minigun just to get into those little vents just to stop it from running again like it did last time. I mean, I probably could have wound the fluid in and pulled the fan back a little bit and had similar results, but I just decided it would be easier and uh, a bit more precise to use that minigun. It's something I don't really do very often, but um, it worked fine. I didn't get any runs around that area this time, so all good. Um, as you can see, I really am hammering that clear on. I probably wouldn't usually go that heavy, but as I mentioned before, I'm really trying to fill up those... Um, those uh, flakes, those 200 micron flakes, and it did quite well. And as I said before, no thinners in there, so it's, um, it's not sort of pulling the gloss out of that clear. Because you are, you're sort of breaking it down as you put more thinners into it. But there you go, it really is, it's just one thing for painting in the cold. I mean, one thing. But if you don't know about it, well then you don't know about it. and. Yeah, you struggle on and on getting runs and just not happy with the finishes. Um, hey, there's nothing to stop you from heating your base coats up, heating your primers up, anything. But yeah, just obviously be careful. It is flammable liquid, you know. You don't just go and put it next to the fire and think it's, you're going to be fine. Because, yeah, it is dangerous. So always, if you're doing painting at home, just be extremely careful. Make sure you wear your PPE, gloves, jacket, uh at least a respirator. I've seen some guys out there just using dust mask while spraying two-pack paint. Um, you know, if you're, that, if you're stupid enough to do that, well then you probably deserve what you get. But there you go, there it is. Um, mostly finished off. These panels come up quite nice. There is a few pinholes, as I mentioned, up the back of that guard there. Most of it was pretty good. I just tried hammering that clear on even heavier and heavier it turned out it didn't run and but it still didn't quite fill them up if i was really fussed about it i would have just sanded the panel down re-cleared it and that would have filled them up most of the way but look it just wasn't worth it for a drift car it's going to go out there it's going to get beaten up look there is a few little uh sort of high spots pimples there where those um flakes are poking through but you know what it's got a killer gloss on it and from 20 meters away or 10 meters away even five meters away it looks totally awesome uh any of the spectators that go to those meets are gonna probably say yeah that looks awesome um and everyone else who's seen it on instagram and facebook and stuff like that's been yeah pretty amazed by it and think it looks pretty cool here it is out in the sun all finished off um, stay tuned for the next video. We're going to be actually painting those stripes down there. Had a little bit of troubleshooting. A couple of things went wrong, but um, stay... No, not, not totally wrong, but um, yeah, stay tuned. And for the next video, we'll show you how we went around getting those stripes and why we decided to do it like that. We were sort of given a bit of um, artistic flair, I guess, on that. He just said the colours that he wanted. And then... Um, he just said, yeah, just do a bit of a racing stripe down there. He didn't really care. So um, we decided to do candy down the center. Now you've seen this video, get out there and paint some shit. Thanks for watching, and this has been another Gunman production. Goodbye.